The Romanian deadlift is, in my opinion, the best deadlift assistance exercise, both for the conventional and the sumo deadlift in a general sense. It's my most prescribed exercise to athletes uh, here at Prime Strength, but it doesn't mean it's best for everyone. We're going to discuss actually the benefits today of the Romanian deadlift, its strength components, its mobility components, because it can hugely improve mobility. Um, and we're going to talk about all the different benefits you can gain from this exercise. We're also going to do a form analysis because almost everyone, including high level athletes and coaches perform this exercise incorrectly and do not get the most out of it, which is why I think it doesn't get as much love on the internet. And we're also going to do um, a really big form analysis breakdown of really how you want to execute the little details of this exercise to maximize it. So without further ado, let's talk about the strength benefits of a Romanian deadlift. Now, first off, we're actually going to get a back view here so you can see my glutes and hamstrings. We're going to move my ugly face out of the way and we're going to play this video here and really discuss what's going on from a, a mechanical standpoint. So first off, notice the slightly wider stance. This is much wider than my conventional deadlift and toes are flared just a little bit. And then notice the very close bar position to my shins and thighs and how much my hips move back in space. In this bottom position, even with this really heavy load, this is 425 pounds here, you can see I'm in really deep hip flexion. My torso is almost horizontal to the ground with a neutral back position, uh, almost biasing extension, if anything. And my glutes and hamstrings, I mean, look at the lines in my hamstrings. They're extremely tensioned. So really what this, this exercise is doing is performing maximal hip extension uh, and it's really a glute and hamstring exercise while targeting your low back and core and upper back in an isometric fashion. So essentially your, your whole torso has to stabilize this movement while your glutes and hamstrings get overloaded through an active eccentric and concentric range of motion. And if you stand and operate your form in a, a specific way that I'm going to discuss later, you're going to get maximum glute and hamstring development a ton of power in your glutes and hamstrings carrying over to both your sumo and your conventional deadlift. And it's going to make your low back and core highly, highly um, trained for handling higher work volume allotments, which we'll discuss here later. So from a strength component, it's really lining up your glutes and hamstrings in a biomechanically optimal position for hip extension while having such high specificity. That's the next benefit is you're basically on a barbell in the same or similar positions as your deadlift, especially if you're a conventional deadlifter, you're going to be bent over in a very similar way. But now we're essentially removing the quads from the, uh, the equation. If done correctly, which again, we'll discuss form later because everyone butchers this, you get zero quad drive. So you completely remove any kind of quad or AKA leg drive off the floor and you're just overloading hip extension and flexion range of motion, active range of motion. And you basically want to go as deep as possible possible. And, and from this, having that barbell in front of the body is going to really target that core and back in a very specific way to how your core and back get elicited in your uh, deadlifting patterns, especially for conventional pullers. Now, from a mobility standpoint, it really elongates active and passive accessible range of motion in your hip extension. So uh, oftentimes I'll do this exercise pretty light when I'm starting off on like a training cycle. So you can see here, if we fast forward, this is only 315 and it's done almost with this really light like um, explosive and tight, but very like flowy form where I'm just working range of motion. You can see at the bottom, I'm going pretty deep. I'm about five inches or so, six inches below my knee, really uh, just working on, on range of motion, back positioning and a few things. So you can really use this exercise to gain a ton of mobility in your back and hips. So if you have a hard time keeping your low back neutral in your deadlift starting position, meaning before you even line up on the bar, you can't, you feels like you can't even get your back into a proper position. RDLs are going to be your friend. I had that problem early on. And when I started training deep hip flexion work, um, or really hip extension work, but going into a, a stretch hip flexion state, that's really what cleared up a lot of my mobility issues in my hamstring. So amazing mobility benefits. Lastly, it improves your work capacity in your core and low back like none other. So for any of you guys who say you can only deadlift once a week, this is for you. If you want to deadlift twice a week, but you always get smoked and it feels like your low back's going to snap, start off with secondary day deadlifts. So, you know, three to four days after your heaviest deadlift day, do some Romanian deadlifts and do them 
with really light load to start just working mobility and position over time, slowly acclimate to that and get them pretty fucking heavy. And after a while, you'll find your work capacity improves so much. You can start deadlifting twice a week and actually do some comp deads both days or some pause deads or whatever you want to throw in there. It's a great way to build work capacity and then transition the exercise to something even more specific for a little bit more strength specific carryover. Um, now <clears throat> lastly, I really want to, or not lastly, there's a few other things I want to touch on, but I want to touch on how I go about executing this exercise. So first off, I always stand, uh, decently wide and let's get a video where you can really see my stance width. So here you can see my stance width is well out. So maybe not well outside, but a little bit of outside shoulder width position with a little bit of toe flare. This is much wider than I stand in my conventional deadlift. The reason why is this is going to be much more advantageous for really stretching and mobilizing the hamstrings and glutes and lining them up in a position where you can get into a nice deep hip flex position while also keeping your back really tight. So this is going to give you the benefit of being able to go a little heavier as well as actually maximally lining up the fiber orientations of your glutes and hamstrings to provide a lot of power. So you can see here, even with this heavy pole, I can really get explosive to the lockout. And that's what's going to make all that explosive power transfer over to your deadlift, whether you're sumo or conventional. You can see how much my glutes are flexing at the bottom and then extending at the top. There's a ton of tension there. And so you want to stand a bit wider. The other thing you want to do is bias extension in your back. So notice here as I go down, you see how my low back's actually a little extended and back's kind of arched out. I do this on purpose. This is not how you'd want to do a heavy deadlift, but doing a lighter deadlift, this is going to be ideal. Uh, beyond that, I also work on certain ab and upper back cues, but that's going to escape this video because I don't want to make this video too long. We actually have uh, right here, wrote, shout out to group coaching video tutorials. We have a whole tutorial on this on our website. If you're a part of our group coaching or any of, uh, or if you're doing our one-on-one -on -one coaching, you get access to all these videos. And, and I explain very thoroughly all the little details inside and out of how to best execute this. But generally speaking, this is my favorite exercise. Now, where people butcher this and go wrong, is they don't do it with stiff enough knees. So going into this form analysis a little bit further, notice how my knees, if anything, are nearly locked out slash really far receded. This allows me to have no quad drive. Most people, when they perform RDLs, you'll see their knees move inches forward, making this tremendously easier, making their leverage better on the back so they don't actually improve their low back or core capacity. And it basically turns it into a conventional, like, short and range of motion hybrid exercise, which is going to do nothing but fatigue you and let you lift heavier loads than you should be handling. This is a hip extension exercise. This is not a deadlift exercise in the sense that you're not trying to bend the knees at all. You want to isolate hip extension while still going as heavy as possible. And that's going to necessitate a knee that's very receded, nearly locked. You want to unlock the knee so you have some mobility back there, but just enough to hinge at the hips maximally and no more. This is also very different than a stiff-legged deadlift, which we also have videos on, but a stiff-legged deadlift, you're going to let the bar drift away from you and it's going to train very different things. I like these more for mobility, so I usually do these from a deficit, but that's a video for another time. That is pretty much a breakdown of my favorite exercise that has carryover to uh, both the conventional and sumo deadlift. For you guys who pull sumo, who think this won't help you, I assure you, your low back, glutes, and hamstrings will be way more prime for your sumo deadlifts if you guys try this out. I know a lot of conventional pullers do RDLs, but sumo pullers, you rarely ever see them. Give it a shot, guys. Also, for ladies, if you want a bigger glutes, RDLs are literally the best exercise. If I had to pick one exercise to build my glutes, RDLs were the thing that did it more than anything else. I'll catch you guys in the next video.